You're listening to the Four Phase Cycle Podcast with your hosts, Dr. Alex and Megan of Zesty Ginger. If you're looking to naturally balance hormones and learn how to work with your body instead of against it, you've definitely come to the right place. As a duo of an integrative MD and a functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and best friends, we use the four phases of the female cycle in combination with functional lab work and mindset practices to transform the lives of the women we work with. We also have a whole lot of fun along the way. If you're new around here, it's best to start with season one before jumping around and plan to roll up your sleeves. Showing up for ourselves and enjoying our lives is what good health is all about. Just a quick reminder though, this information is not intended to diagnose, manage, or treat disease always consult with your doctor before making changes. Hello, hello, Dr. Alex here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic that is really dear to my heart because it is an area that I got really tripped up at and it slowed down my progress. And the reason I feel so strongly about this topic is that not realizing this, not only, you know, it didn't get me the results I wanted to have, but on top of it, it is incredibly frustrating and guilt and shame inducing when you feel like you know stuff and you are doing some of the stuff and you still don't see the point of doing it, right? You don't see the results of why you're taking doing all that work and the effort and that can really spiral to a place where we feel really bad about ourselves we feel really bad about our environment and we feel really bad about how we see the world and the more it gets looped in it can go to you know it can extend to spirituality on all sorts of other areas of life and make a big impact in a negative way And so that is a big part of why I'm so excited to talk about this today and really dig into it because the concept is really simple. It's probably something that you've heard before, but I would like to talk about it in a different way that I don't see people talking about. And I'm hoping those of you that have been in this situation can begin to see if or how it is playing out in your life, apply it, and then, you know, get back on track, feel unstuck. We're not ever actually stuck, but we have to be authentic and true and honest with ourselves if we feel stuck, right? Those are two, both can be true. You're not actually stuck, but if you feel stuck, that's your actual experience saying, oh no, you're not stuck and ending it at that doesn't really work. So that is why I think it's worth unpackaging it in this way. Before I dig into that, Also very exciting news, our Health Transformation Accelerator is open for registration. It's only open this week, and then the next time will be in the fall. We run it twice a year, so you definitely do not want to miss out on waiting another six months for your transformation and to feel empowered, peaceful, present, and in control of your life. So head on over to the page to check that out, zestyginger.com slash transform. The link will also be in the show notes. This is our seven-step process that Megan and I have used to resolve all of our health issues. We've also used the seven-step process to build this company that you see here, the podcast, the social media we have, the programs that we have. All of it was built from the system. And it even goes into, this is how Megan got her perfect lake house that she's been wanting to have. This is how I've manifested lots of internal transformations in myself in terms of going from feeling really low self-worth, like I didn't belong here, you know, anywhere in in groups and, and all the way over to knowing what my path is and feeling like I have the tools and the toolkit to keep figuring out as it changes over time. So you can see across the board, no matter which area of life it is, when it comes to brain-based transformation, it's the same formula. 
you just get better at applying it at whatever it is that you're dealing with it. So Health Transformation Accelerator is a 12-week program, and we have our ladies, some go through it once, and a significant portion continue to stay with us round after round and continue to up-level. This is for people who have, you feel, you will know if I'm talking to you, you feel like there is something you want to accomplish in this world. You feel inside that you have big dreams, that you want to make an impact, whatever that looks like. You know that in life, you're being called to more than you have. If you want to help improve the lives of others, those around you, your family, in addition to yourself, this program is for you. It's really for women who are here to stand in their own power, be their authentic selves, and bring that into the world, model it for others. And because we all know from looking around, we desperately need this. And we are, we work with women who have committed themselves to doing the work and to making a difference in this world. So if that is you, head on over to zestyginger.com slash transform. All right, so let's come back to, this is the, <laughs> the step, the missing step that keeps a lot of people stuck. Now, like I said, the concept is simple, and so this is something you've heard before, but most people are talking about it in a very limited sense. And that, to me, is why people are confused about what to actually do with it, right? The more that you have been in the space learning, researching, you know a lot, you've tried a lot, the more this step is going to be important, especially if you have been in that category and you're still not having the results that you're looking for. If your life experience is not what you are going for, And especially if you feel like, gosh, I've just done a lot. I know a lot. I read all these things on the internet. It's like, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know that. I've heard that. I've done that, (laughs) right? If you're in that category or even starting out to be in that category, this is likely going on, okay? So what is this piece? This This comes down to application of learnings. And another way of saying is you have to put into action what you are learning inside your real world life. Now, most people are like, yeah, duh, Alex, that's super obvious, (laughs) right? But we see it in, in our own groups and in other transformational groups that we've participated in is that it's really easy to learn and then figure out some select actions to take that looks like doing, right? This is the part where people are like, well, I learned about the diet. I'm doing the diet, right? I took the action. I'm done. And then they go on to the next thing. Or, you know, I want to start a podcast. Well, okay. I went and downloaded anchor on my phone, right? Or whatever. Um, app you're using, right? Or I bought a microphone and that's taking action. And you're absolutely right. That is taking action. That, and that's the category we're all talking about, right? Like how do you go out in the world and do stuff from what you learned? And I'm a big fan of that. I think that's really important. That is a limited slice though, when we limit to only our external actions especially when it comes to getting a result, right? You want to lose weight, therefore working out is the next step, therefore you buy the shoes, right? That's the action that people know. The parts that are missing though is all of the other ways that we live and experience ourselves that do not look like direct action stuff like buying running shoes. So what am I talking about here? Let's say you're doing the diet or you're getting the running shoes to work out or you know you're doing your protocol for mold. On top of that, that that's the doing. But as you know, think about, you know, 2 weeks ago on any particular Wednesday, you could have been in a really good headspace, right? And emotionally in in your heart space, feeling pretty centered, things are feeling good. 
And those actions that you take will have a very different internal experience for you, right? And then think a couple of days later in that week when you weren't in such a good headspace, right? How did those things feel and how did you think about them and what happened there? More than likely, you could have taken the exact same steps, like the day-to-day -day stuff could have been very similar, but the way that you've had, the way that you felt and thought and had the sensations, you know, in your physical body and energetic body, then modified the experience significantly. That means that if we don't tend to all of those other aspects of ourselves and figure out how to take action steps for those parts of us, then we're leaving a lot of that on the table, right? Because you hit a streak with, where you are not in a good head space and a good heart space repeatedly for a period of time, and you know things tend to go south, right? And that's because we can keep doing the action items, the doing this stuff, for a period of time, but once the scales tip and we head over into the internal world begins to get rocky enough, it will impact the external world. You won't actually take those actions, right? So this is where people go on the merry-go-round. It's like, okay, I get it. I do stuff. I'm ready to go. I want to change all that stuff. I buy the things. I do the things. I make the calendar. I put the reminder in my note and then you hit a downstream, things get wonky, you feel bad about yourself, you're like, oh, I just won't do anything, and then you feel uncomfortable enough that you're like, oh, I'm motivated, I really need to figure this out, and there you are, you're back at the top of the circle again, right, and you just did another loop, and every time you do the loop, it, the self-esteem, the self-worth, the doubt, the fear, they all just have more evidence then in our arsenal to beat ourselves up. And this is where it gets really negative sometimes and really kind of self-flagellating to, <laughs> to really like beat ourselves up and say, look at how many times you failed this. And it's, in my opinion, because we are very ill-equipped to know what action looks like for these other things. That is why when it comes to addressing the other aspects, I find having some sort of framework to anchor back to to be most helpful, right? Because the doing is our physical body in space doing stuff. But how can we support the experience of it throughout and actually apply it? So from this conversation, I'm going to fill out some of the toolkits and ap applications for it, but you can also go through and look at all of our podcast episodes here and say, oh my goodness, from that vantage point, I can go through and see for each of these topics, how am I, have I applied it? Have I applied it in multiple areas in my life? How does that fit, right? How would that look like to actually take action on it? How would it look like to interact with this on a daily basis? What happens is that your toolkit blows wide open. You begin to have so many ways of approaching yourself, supporting yourself, and making your life experience exactly what you want as much as you have control over it because the truth is we don't, right? We don't have complete control over what happens to us, but we sure do have complete control over how we navigate what happens to us. And that's scary when you don't have a toolkit to fall back on. But when you have a really rockin' diversified works in every situation toolkit, it's a lot less scary. So physical body, when it comes to taking action, right, there can be things like calming the body down when we feel significant discomfort taking a certain action. This can be, okay, I'm going to set boundaries with someone, but I'm really scared to do it because I have deep abandonment and rejection wounds, right? And we may not know that up front, but at some point you get to that level of clarity where you say, it feels scary to talk to this person because I've had experiences repeatedly in life, most of us, or maybe at least just one significant one, where we brought something up, we felt rejected, it was the withdrawal of love, and now our brains have learned that is a scary event, right? But sometimes then, 
stepping into a new identity and transforming means that we go and and tell people exactly what we think and exactly what's true for us authentically and in that in that case not acknowledging that you have deep fear of rejection and abandonment under the surface of that you could think about having that conversation and journal on it and come up with a plan and still never do it or you could do it and have a really negative experience because you know, we're kind of deflecting the rejection rather than truly opening up and being vulnerable to someone as we communicate. So interrupting that first from the physical body standpoint of being like, what, how about some vagal nerve uh, exercises, right? Chest thumping, humming, singing, gargling, legs up the wall. We covered a whole bunch of new ones in the Um, habit challenge last week so I won't even go into all of those options here but the the long story short is you can interrupt that pattern and apply the action in the very specific scenario of this is the outcome I want I want healthy boundaries so that I have the type of relationships that I'm really looking for and then saying what are all the action steps that I can truly bring to this because just talking to the person is only one tiny action step to take. It feels big, but along the way, there's a million and 10 other things to acknowledge within ourselves, right? All of those things that come up. So physical body, calming it down, talking through emotions, naming the emotions that come up, writing out and naming competing emotions, right? I'm guilty about setting this boundary because of my past with this person. And I also hold deep frustration about what's happening and how I feel that that is unfair, right? Actually naming the emotions and saying, Ooh, these two are the ones that are kind of squabbling with each other. And this podcast has multiple emotional processing episodes and tools that I've shared on here. That kind of stuff then one by one, you can say, I have three different emotions here that I'm dealing with. They are all getting looped into each other. How do I begin to process and sit with, for example, the dominant one, or what are the two ones that are most in competition with one another, which two emotions are making me feel the push pull of I want to do it, I don't want to do it. And this is just an example of boundaries, but you can hear very clearly how this would happen with food, with different ways of moving, right, and goals that we have around how we behave and act, all of that stuff, same process. Most of us just have competing beliefs or competing emotions, sometimes all of the above, and parsing it out and processing them systematically will speed up your ability to handle that conversation about setting boundaries and ensuring that it's going to go as positively for you as it can be at the time. Now, again, this isn't saying things are going to be hunky-dory all the time, but once you start applying these things, Once you start applying the processes, like let's say you address guilt, you start seeing, ooh, there's a lot underneath this guilt. And sometimes, you know, the what's underneath it for that guilt really has to do with what I've done here in this scenario. What taking the action in all of these areas of who we are, emotions, thoughts, physical body, energetic body, you get the feedback because there's always more information underneath there, right? Just realizing that we have a fear of rejection can really open our eyes to, boy, where does this fear of rejection play out? Oh, that's why I'm not asking for that promotion. Ooh, that's why I've, you know, I don't make the time to connect with my partner. I really feel like I got rejected some there. You know, and now I'm scared to approach them. And, ooh, when my kids do that thing where, you know, they, they want to do something else while I'm going to do that makes me feel rejected as well. And that makes me have less patience, right? And I'm totally editorializing. The, the, this can play out in a number of different ways. But really look at what's happening there. You took one, you know, issue, I'll say, that... You want to have this conversation with this person. That's one action step. And now in taking the application of what is going on internally and asking questions, 
How do I feel? What am I thinking? Where is there competition between these things? You start to just you pull out the drawer and you dump it out because then anything tied to that will also come up to your awareness. Now, as you are working through these things and seeing how they cross over in other areas of your life, not only are you improving that conversation about boundaries, but you're improving your relationship and the way you show up for the relationship with your kids, for example, or with your partner, for example. And who doesn't want that, right? This is how we can fast track our transformation so much faster when we really take the action steps for all of us. That's the caveat. Not just action, but action for all of who we are. Okay. Once you start getting more info, the movement, because it builds and all gets looped into each other, the movement is so much faster. You will be up leveling. We're talking about not in years, you're going to be up leveling months sometimes in weeks, right? It goes faster. And the more that you apply it, the faster it goes. So if you've ever looked at someone online and you're like, how do they keep going that quick in life, right? They're like, they were single. All of a sudden they're in a relationship. All of a sudden they're traveling like they said. All of a sudden they got their dream job. If you're seeing someone living out doing it, they may not talk about it in the same way, but they are doing the work to take the action on all of these aspects of themselves, because that's the way that you can go unified. And when we go unified, we go faster. When we go fragmented, it's exhausting to keep all those fragments of you together and all keeping up. You're always going, oh, there's me back there. Let's go, drag me along here. It's tiring, it's frustrating, and it ultimately is very, very slow. This is the kind of application work that is so much harder than buying the shoes or even making yourself go for the run, right? And that's why people are like, that sounds nice, but I'm better off like making a vision board, buying some cute clothes so I'm motivated, and I'll just do that, Alex. Right. And if that's working, cool. But most people don't say that. They're not like, yeah, I'm fast tracking my life. I'm becoming exactly who I want to be very rapidly. How many people do you know that can say that or can you? And if you can, awesome. Awesome job. And to a certain extent, we're all just still getting better. So there's really no, no room for, oh, I'm... I'm too good at taking, you know, applic- applying what I learned to my life. I, mo- most of us can, will modify it and we'll change it and we'll grow into something more and it'll become something different over time. So none of us are ever done in this regard. But if you want to get unstuck, this is the most courageous thing, the most courageous way you can look at dealing with yourself and it is magical. <laughs> it's, it's just the, the coolest thing. And if you want to hear real life stories that aren't just me, you know, and, and what you've heard on the podcast, go to zestyginger.com slash transform. And you'll see everyone that's been in the program talk about when you're living this and listen to their stories. Right. They'll and they'll share what their life was like before and they'll share what their life was after. And the after I will t- you'll see it on their faces like this isn't just me getting excited because it works for me it's time and time again this is brain-based transformation at its finest and the beauty of it is is that it feels good to be you all together it just feels so much better and when you hit the bumps and all of you comes with ugh, so much easier so much easier. So yeah, don't just take my word for it. Go over there, watch the videos and then see what you think. Watch their faces, watch their eyes, look at their body language and, you know, tune into yourself. How does that compare? Right. And, and see how, see what's going on there. This is the brave part of really being like, okay, what's, what is the area for me? Right. Where do I need to go next? And once you ask that, you do get an answer. And getting an answer means more information to act on. And you can do it. 
Megan and I are here for you. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> we'll keep making all of this stuff. We're always, always rooting for you. We know that it's people who are devoted and committed enough to this kind of work who are going to show up and make the biggest impact all over the place for kids, for adults, for schools, for jobs, for economy. There's so much help that's needed and the people willing to do this work are going to change it. And that is so, so, so exciting. We couldn't feel more blessed to be doing this work. So check out zestyginger.com slash transform. Come join us for Health Transformation Accelerator this round. If you're already in HTA family, welcome back. We're so excited to start this next round and watch you, you transform. All right, sending you lots of love. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming out to hang with us on the podcast. It is our goal to transform the way women are treated in healthcare. And we need your help. We need your help to get the word out. We have a lofty goal of 1 million downloads. And we know that as this podcast grows, we're going to be able to reach more women, get more amazing speakers for you, and bring the most cutting edge information. If you found these pod classes helpful, please take a moment to text five women you know the link to the seat.